In this video, you can win a thousand kroners in charging from Elton. More on that later. Hey guys, and welcome to Northern Sweden. Welcome to Jukmuk and, and Ice Lake. And welcome to this guys, the Polestar 3. This is insane. And I'm so excited to be driving this car for the very first time. We were at the launch one and a half years ago in Copenhagen in Denmark. We filmed this car extensively on the interior and on the exterior on several occasions, but we've never test driven it. And today I am attending the world premiere test drive here, the Arctic driving experience with Polestar. And in this video, we're gonna drive this and I'm gonna tell you guys if it is any good. And if you guys who have ordered one, should keep your order and for you who maybe order something else maybe you should cancel that order and buy one of these instead. Elton is a one and all charging app that can charge across different charge point operators in Norway, Sweden, Finland and Denmark. One payment method, one charging interface and one map interface makes charging super simple and easy. And Elton are actually giving away a thousand kroners in charging so to participate go to the link under this video and register your phone number to win a thousand kroners in charging from Elton. Inside the Polestar 3. So guys I've been waiting for this event for a long time and I've been so excited about driving the new Polestar 3 so I really can't wait and without further ado let's just put the car into drive and let's just set off here. So we have a few different courses here that we're going to be able to drive on. This is a performance version so this has I think it's 22 inch wheels it has you know the sport setup on the suspension when you go into into sport mode and also has the upgraded brakes and the gold seat belts and all of that. So we're going to take a left turn. We are here for the whole day and I'm going to be doing uh, several other videos with uh, the guy who is the head of like chassis and engineering and um, like um, handling which is Joachim. He's sitting right next to me here off camera but uh, we've already filmed a little bit of exciting stuff today and we're gonna do more content later so wait out for that video guys so if you don't want to miss out on that please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also give this video a thumbs up but my first driving impression is that this is a very competent quiet and solidly built car we've seen the interior before we've seen the exterior I've been impressed by the material choices just the level of quality but driving the car is very different and I just want to put this car into where do I put the one pedal driving yeah you welcome here here settings, settings and then there we're just gonna put it into low and then we're gonna go off to one of the courses here and just do a little bit of driving impressions this is again just my first impressions video and it's gonna be on ice and it's in the cold and we're on a track so it's not gonna be super perfect but Something you can feel immediately with many of these driver's cars. And remember guys, that my reference point is my Taycan Cross Turismo. I've owned for a few years now. I've driven a lot of 911s and sport cars, the pa sports cars the, the, the past like six months. And the first thing I noticed with the Polestar 3 is just how nicely calibrated and weighted and naturally feeling the steering is. It weights up naturally. This is like every other electric car today or every other car today. It's an electric power system system. So it's an e-pass. We don't have, I don't think, maybe a handful of cars today that have actually hydraulic steering. But this feels so natural and so intuitive. And that in combination with the chassis tuning of this car, this is on four corner air suspension. It is a dual air suspension chamber setup, but it is set up more on the sporty side. It's closer to a Porsche Taycan than it is to an Audi e-tron GT. And those two cars actually feel very, very different. This is really well controlled. This car is like more than 2.6 tons. It is an SUV. It's almost five meters long with a wheelbase of 2.9 meters. We have a huge 110 kilowatt hour battery pack, but going around these turns at low speeds now, it just manages to wait and mass the weight in an impressive way that I really only felt in sports electric cars like a Porsche Taycan sedan or an Audi e-tron GT or any of those really high-end and really expensive cars. And remember, in Norway, this car, the performance version with all the bells and whistles with winter wheels, is like just kissing a little bit above a million kroners. 
and that is impressive. At that price, pr price point with these modern electric cars, it's usually a compromise, but I've been struggling to find any compromises with this product yet because it's really impressive in the chassis and ride and handling department. Yes, it is more firmly set up than say probably the Volvo EX90 is going to be, maybe something like a Mercedes EQE, but I think it is very comparable in the way it controls its chassis and the way it controls its mass to the Mercedes EQE SUV 43 AMG, yes, it, has, it is a mouthful. Uh, I think there's also like a Formatic Plus in there somewhere and a lot of nomenclature, but it is very comparable to the sporty version of the Mercedes EQE SUV and the way it handles its mass. But what's impressive here, which was also quite impressive in the Mercedes EQE, was the steering. This steering here has to be, and I'm gonna, I mean, I may change my opinion lately, and this is a really cool event and I'm really excited, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, that I think this E-Pass, the way this steering is calibrated, is probably the third best I've tested in the past few years after number one, Mercedes EQE, sedan 53 AMG 4 Matic Plus, Porsche Taycan, and I'm gonna say this is a very close second to the Porsche. I think the Porsche just has a little bit more delicacy, but, I actually think the feedback in this is better. And over Christmas, I actually was very lucky and got to drive the Lotus Electra, a car I was also very excited about. And that car also handled, handles its mass and weight really impressively. Looks like a Urus on the outside. It's really nicely built, but it was lacking in the driving experience in my opinion. The steering there, I mean, it's precise, but it was just quite lifeless. And in my opinion, a sporting vehicle, the icing on the cake is the steering feel in calibration. The way it weights up, the feedback it gives you, the way it just, you know, weight communicates, the, how the mass is uh, moving, you know, left to right, and how the wheels are, are loading and unloading on grip. And this is just feels so natural. So we're gonna try to go a little bit faster here on this ice course and I also want to mention, I've been talking about the steering a lot, but I think this really just, you know, enhances the driving experience because the underlying chassis here is super impressive. Super impressive body control. We're on massive wheels and tires. If I want to tighten my line and get too hot into a corner, I go off the throttle. The one pedal is now in low region setting, but this car has torque vectoring on the rear axles. Instead of a traditional differential, this has a Borg Warner a torque vectoring clutch on the rear axle. And it's not only active while on throttle, so if I have steering angle here and I go off throttle, the car will just want to rotate, sends a little bit more power to the outer, outer wheel. It also does that off throttle. So if I want to tighten the line here, I go off the throttle, and then it breaks the inner wheel a little bit and just gives me jet rotation. And this feels just super natural. A few weeks ago, I did ice driving with Continental and I drove a Mustang. Mach-E long range all wheel drive, which just didn't want to do what I wanted it to do. It just worked against me all the time. This car though, this is so impressive because it just feels natural. It just, you know, feels intuitive to drive. It just is so confidence inspiring. And that in combination with a chassis just, just feels competent and a steering that is just so alive and so communicative. This, I've been smiling now for the whole video, and that is because I'm super impressed by how this car drives. So there are gonna be several more videos, diving a little bit more deep into the chassis and dynamics of this car with the Joachim, which is now off camera, but wait for it, guys. It's a real treat, the videos that are coming, and also gonna to talk to Beatrice, who is also head of the product, and yeah, Really cool to be up here in Yukmok with uh, with Polestar. We're here now on a long stretch of road to test the air suspension, the comfort level. So now we're in standard mode. And if I understand correctly, Joachim, just quickly off camera, is standard suspension here a little bit more firmer than in the dual motor version in standard suspension? Or is it the same suspension tuning? Uh, no, slightly. Okay, so with the performance, you do get a slightly stiffer suspension. So this is interesting because I'm impressed. This is a very bumpy road. We're gonna go, let's say, 90 kilometers an hour. 
and this is bumpy, this is on ice, but the body motions are so well controlled and dampened, like the initial, da initial dampening is, 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 is really tight. The spring rate and the damper rate is just really, really nicely calibrated. I'm, I, I'm impressed how this car just glides over a piece of road because it's not floaty and boaty like something like a Mercedes EQS SUV, which is really actually under damped. I've several times on bumpy roads, like almost hit the bump stops in that car. But this car is just so well controlled and even a little bit side to side motion in standard mode. It is, it just feels really nicely calibrated. And then on the way back, we can go into firm, set the suspension to firm, or maybe we could try nimble. I haven't tried nimble actually. Let's try nimble and it should tighten up a little bit. Yeah, it does. But once you go into firm, it really utilizes that dual chamber air suspension. It makes the compression chamber half the size, so giving us, you know, much higher spring rates. And it just firms up. It just firms up everything. And I think this is something you want to use when going on, you know, uh, canyon roads, mountain roads, mountain passes, or just driving really fast, maybe on the Autobahn in Germany which I can't wait to test this car on. I'm gonna really beg for one of these to drive to Italy maybe next uh, or this summer, guys, because this is a real treat to drive this car. But on a bumpy road, that firm suspension is really firm, but putting it into standard, it just glides. It's just really comfortable, but it's never like boaty. It's never like, it's super comfortable, but it's really just really nicely controlled and dampened. I'm really impressed by this car. I know I've said impressed many times, but I'm actually really impressed by how well this car is tuned. So this was a quite short and quick video, just my first driving impressions of this car. And the reason I just wanted to make a short first impressions video to get out as quickly as possible, because we are here at the last day of like a two week event where the whole world press have been here and the embargo is actually tonight and we are going to be here all day and then i just have a few hours at the hotel before we have dinner with the engineer so i just want to make this video as quick as possible to get it out but hopefully it is a really nice video for you guys i am super super impressed with this car because i go to a lot of car launches uh, the past few years and a lot of the marketing of electric cars or cars in general there's a marketing team that really wants to push an agenda or want to put a vehicle in this or in this aspect or this light and many times the brand will communicate something and then the product doesn't deliver everything i've heard about the Polestar 3 when it comes to its chassis dynamics the way it drives the vision of what the people who work at Polestar want is very close to what this product is. And even the product may even be more impressive and better than I thought because being in this business for a few years now, you kind of lower your expectations. You take most of what the manufacturers say as a grain of salt. And Porsche, there I said it, Polestar, a few years ago at like a, an investor presentation said they're going after Porsche. And with the Polestar 2, it's a cheaper product. Nobody thought the Polestar 2 was going to compete with anything from Porsche. But I genuinely think that this driving wise, dynamically wise, the way it's set up, the way it's calibrated, the way it's tuned, really competes with Porsche. I've owned a Taycan Cross Turismo for two years now. I've owned an e-tron GT before that. I've driven a lot of Porsches. And I have to say, if I were to switch out my Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo with this car tomorrow, I don't think I would miss the way my Porsche drives because this is really close. And I'm really excited to see how this compares to the new Macan EV because this may just give that car a run for it's money. So guys, as I said, there are gonna be several videos. I'm gonna do a separate video with Yua Kim, head of chassis and, and uh, drivetrain tuning here at, uh, or at Polestar. That's gonna be a really cool video. I'm gonna do another video with Beatrice. And they also have another surprise for us later tonight that they don't wanna tell us what 
is but they said it's going to be a video and it's going to be really cool and exciting so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys later and goodbye